The moment you start it is the moment you are it. Literally, as you start, you are putting yourself on a new timeline. You are embodying a new energy. And the more you let the old identity, the old familiar patterns, the old behaviors, the old actions keep you from actually starting something new is the more you will feel stuck. And one of the biggest things that people believe and the reasons they don't start is because they believe that now is not the right time. Well, maybe in two or three months ago, in two or three months from now, then it will be the perfect time to start. Once I have just a few more things figured out, then I will be ready. And the thing is, that is just a cop out. That is just a way of staying the same. The ego wants to stay familiar to what it knows, to how it identifies itself. We will always do everything we can to stay consistent to the way we define ourselves, And that's why when you start to be this new version of you, the ego says, ooh, fear. Let me infuse some fear into your reality to keep you in safety. Even if keeping you in safety means keeping you into a nine to five job that you hate, keeping you in a toxic relationship that maybe isn't actually good for you in the sense of like fulfilling, and it keeps you in the same childhood dynamics many times as well that just simply feel familiar to the past. The moment you start it, the moment you are it, and the moment you giving yourself permission to be it is when things really begin to change. Even for me right now as I make this video, I'm actually passionate about making this video. I went and sat down to make a video yesterday and, or two days ago, and as I sat down to make this video, it felt so forced because I was making a video because I believed I had to because I have the old identity of being just a YouTuber. And part of being a YouTuber meant that I made three to five videos a week, no matter what. Been doing that since 2017. And it's brought me all this safety. It's brought me all of this abundance. It's, it's brought me my dream life. However, now it feels like it's stagnant unless I do something else. It feels stagnant unless I branch and expand my sense of identity, my sense of self into a new level of passion. And I've been making videos even talking about, I, bet I was making a video on reverse engineering your future self. And the reason I stopped making that video is because two or three minutes in, I realized I was being a hypocrite. Here I am making a video on reverse engineering your future self sharing with you that sometimes it's scary to let go of the old. It was scary for me to let go of my nine to five job back in 2017 because it wasn't a certainty thing that I was going to be a YouTuber, but I committed to the vision and I committed to that reality. But it, is, it was still scary for me to let that go. In the same way, I realized in a moment that I was making that video that I was only making the video because I believe I had to. Because the old identity says, oh, if you don't make three to five videos a week, you'll fall off. No one will watch your content anymore. And the interesting thing that I've realized is most of the, the, the views on my YouTube channel anyways come from older videos. Why? Because when I made those older videos, it was probably when I was even more passionate. The older videos is when YouTube to me was like a, a, a passionate, making videos are so passionate, so authentic. And then the last year that I've been making attracting love content, I've been doing it literally in one way. It's like, okay, I know this content can help people. And another way though, it's like, it's just what gets views on the channel. Like if I have to make one more video on the no contact rule and how the no contact rule is going to make you so much more magnetic, I'm pretty sure I would explode or combust or just not want to make videos anymore. <laughs> I literally, like, as of two months ago, I don't think I've made, I, I was ahead on videos, but I haven't made that because it literally feels like I'm doing it just because it's like what was getting views. I want to do what lights up my soul, even if it means there's not as many views. I'm more, I value more being authentic and vulnerable than I do just getting the validation through views or new people, subscribers and shit coming in. Like, this for me is more, I want to treat this more like an art, more like something I'm passionate about for my heart. But when I went to make that video the other day, 
I could, re I recognize within myself, my old mentality of just having to put out a YouTube video to keep feeding the algorithm, to keep the momentum going. And I thought to myself, is this actually helping me to wire in a new version of me? Is this branching me out of my comfort zone? And what I've realized for myself is the true, like right now in this moment, me being the most expansive version of me would be more so, would be more so planning a new live event. I do like three retreats a year in Costa Rica, but like planning my own actual live event where it's like, you know, like a three or five day experience with meditation, helping people go through pretty much what we do in the 21 day challenges, helping people go through it in a way where it's just like in person over five days, complete transformation. That's what I'm actually passionate about. When I'm at a live event, I'm running a live event, I'm speaking. You can feel my energy is way different than even just like just being in front of a camera that's going right now. And right now I feel good, but I'm just saying like it's, it's a different level when there's people. Even yesterday, when I, two days ago when I stopped making the video that I started making, it took me 30 minutes to make two minutes of the video. And I was like, what? I'm, screw it. This is, this is hypocritical. Then what I did is the day after that, I had to do a, uh, a live in my Magnetic Mastery membership. And I just, I, I taught the video that I wanted to do and I did it live because I realized I like going live. I like connecting with people live. I like interacting with people live. That's more my passion, even though everything else, like even though other things in my life say, oh, just do what always done because that's always worked. There's a, there's a part of my soul that knows wired in this new me is the key to really setting myself on a new timeline. Now, one of the things as well, when it all comes down to this is understanding that you get in life a direct reflection of who you are being. And if your thoughts, your actions, and your emotions are equal to a reality where maybe you're working a nine to five job you hate, maybe you're in a reality, your thoughts, your feelings, or actions are equal to a reality where you're single or all the guys are just one way or all women are just one way or whatever it is, then that keeps you locked in that familiar energy. And sometimes I remember back in 2017, even as I think about this right now, the biggest blocks that blocked me from just simply making a choice to go on YouTube was simple. Simply, I believed I wasn't credible. I believed I wasn't good enough. I believed that because I was living at my dad's house, I didn't have anything of value to say. How can I make YouTube videos on the law of attraction or anything, even personal development, if I live at my dad's house? And I was like 20-something years old. It, was, it felt hypocritical to me. I also was like, I don't have the right skills. I don't know how to edit videos. I don't know how to um, market the videos. I don't know how to get the information. I didn't know. And I kept telling myself that story. So I would have one foot in this new reality, one foot out of this new reality. I would make one video and then two months later I'd make another video and then two months later I'd make another video. And then that was over the course of six months. I dabbled. I did not actually commit. Another aspect that I had is a level of perfectionism. I see this a lot with people. They have a perfectionist mentality where they say that in order for something to be good enough, it has to reach this extremely unrealistic high standard that I don't even know what it is. If you ask someone that's a perfectionist, let me ask you, if you're a perfectionist and you're listening to this right now, how would you know that something you're doing is good enough. How would you know? Because here's the thing. Most people that I ask that question to, they have no freaking idea. They say, huh, I guess there is no actual end result perfection that I even know of. It's just this concept of feeling like things are never good enough. It's setting the bar so high that it's almost impossible to actually hit. And what I found for people that are perfectionists is while their intentions might be good, their intentions are a way to keep them from actually taking action to begin with. And perfectionists are always also normally have attention on the end result. The end result. Instead of the intention on the process. 
So for me, because I definitely had this perfectionist mentality, I had to completely let it go and realize this one little statement. Progress over perfection. Instead, focus on progress. When I first got on YouTube, my energy was very cringy. It, I had to read off of a, a piece of paper that I had taped onto a window. Then I made a video. Then I made another video. Then I made another video. And I kept making videos. And the more I made the videos, the more confident I got and the more I started to believe in myself, the more comfortable I became at speaking. Then eventually, I felt good making the videos. I felt confident making the videos. And here's the thing. People feel what you feel. So in the beginning, anytime you do anything, you may not have much confidence because it's the first time you're freaking doing it. Anything. I play pickleball now. I like pickleball. I haven't played that much, but the first time I played it wasn't that good. Actually, I was, I was decent because I picked it up fast. Maybe that's a part of my identity. And then I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. I learned how to do different things. And then guess what? Then I got even more and more confident. Then I could talk smack to my friends and stuff like that because I felt confident and it was fun to banter around. But basically, anything you do consistently, you get better at. So if you say, well, I'm not good on camera, Aaron. Remember, you're not good on camera yet because you haven't put in the reps. And maybe even your idea of being good on camera is some perfectionist idea. How would you know you're good on camera? How would you know? You wouldn't until you do it consistently and you realize that you might have some perfectionist mentality of some extremely high standard that is some conceptual idea. Here's the thing with a lot of people that block themselves because of perfectionism. The thing with this whole process is, is how would you know that something you do is good enough? How would you know? Let's take this a step deeper. How would you know that you are good enough? Ooh, we're getting a little bit deeper here now, aren't we? Because at a certain time in your past, you may have may, maybe have made a choice that said, I will know that I am good enough when something is perfect because mom or dad, when I was younger, said I wasn't good enough at something or I felt like I wasn't good enough at something, so I made the choice then that I will never get rejected again, and the way I'm never gonna get rejected again is by being perfect. And if I reject myself over and over again, if I judge myself over and over again, then no one else will be able to because I will be harder on myself than everybody else. But guess what? This is a thing that never really resolves itself unless you let go of the belief that you're not worthy. Because here's the thing, it's just a belief. It is not inherently true that you are not good enough. It is not built into reality that you are not good enough. It is a belief. It is something that you've bought into because of something your mommy or your daddy told you when you were six or three or five, and then you decided, I internalize this. I am not good enough. I will prove it to everyone that I am good enough by setting this extremely high standard. So what I encourage you to do is to look at this belief and to realize it's just a belief. At one point, you probably believed that Santa Claus was real if you grew up in the, in the United States or if you were of certain religions. You probably believed that Santa Claus was real. At one point, you may have believed the boogeyman lived under your bed. But what happened? You grew up. You realized that that belief was not true. You, you became aware that you were lied to. And if somebody told you you weren't worthy enough growing up, they lied to you. It's not true. It is not inherently built into reality that you aren't worthy. It is a belief, it is something that you've caught onto, and it's something you've internalized. And I'm here to tell you right here, right now, whatever date it is that you're watching this video or listening to this, let it go. Let go. You don't need to carry that around with you anymore. 
You don't need to carry around with you this great heaviness that says I'm not worthy. It's just a belief. For me, I realized as well that I had a belief that I wasn't worthy. I remember a couple, like two years ago when I started dating, started really putting myself out there, and there was, I realized that I was stemming from this belief that said there's just something wrong with me. I'm not worthy. And what I realized is growing up, I thought that my parents' divorce, I thought that mom or dad being physically or emotionally unavailable was my fault. They are this way because I'm not good enough. And I had to realize it's not my fault. And for you, watching or listening to this right now, you can realize it's not your fault. It's not your fault you believed that you're not worthy. But maybe you internalized it. And think about it too. Think of this. The universe, God, source energy, does not make mistakes. Everything in our reality has a purpose. The trees have a purpose. Grass has a purpose. Bees have a very important purpose. Without the bees, most of us wouldn't even be here. Most of us wouldn't be here. <laughs> no pun. The sun has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. And it'd probably be easy for you to agree that, yes, Aaron, everything has a purpose. Like you, the reality, universe does not make mistakes. Then why would you believe that the universe made a mistake with you? Everything is worthy simply because it exists. Would you argue with me that a baby isn't worthy? Would you argue, no, Aaron, a baby's not worthy? Of course you wouldn't. We both know babies are worthy. But what happens? The baby grows up, has a reference experience, and then believes it's not. Of course a baby's worthy. Of course a puppy's worthy. Of course insects are worthy. Everything is worthy. Everything has value for simply being itself. And in the same way, the universe doesn't make a mistake and the universe didn't make a mistake with you. And if you believe it did, by the way, how selfish. Think about how selfish that is. The universe does not make mistakes. Everything is worthy except for me, except for significant me. I am not worthy, but everything else is. I'm going to play the martyr might sound a little bit harsh. I'm just trying to wake you up to understanding that you are worthy. It is not your fault. And you can wake up to who you really came here to be. And you can realize that the moment you start it, the moment you are it. Literally, the moment you decide who you are and you embody that energy is the moment that you then put yourself on a new timeline. I made the choice February of 2017. I'm going to make a video every single day on YouTube no matter what. I did that, guess what happened? Within six months, I quit my nine to five job selling women's shoes, and I was then making three or four videos a day. Did that for three months. I was three months ahead on videos, making daily videos. And my whole reality shifted because I committed to that version of me. I didn't wait for people to tell me, Aaron, you're good enough. Aaron, um, now, you're, you're, now you're good enough of making videos. Now you've edited good enough. Go to one of my first videos. Frame of me. Insert title here over my face. Why? Because I spent two hours on, or an hour or something like that on iMovie trying to figure out how the hell do I get this insert title here thing to move and I couldn't figure it out. Eventually I learned how to edit on iMovie and I edited all my own videos for the first like six to eight months or a year maybe. And then guess what happened? Well, eventually I got a new editor. But... Basically, I learned how to edit, even though, and I put the video out there anyways, just to prove that you don't have to have it all perfect. You don't have to have it all figured out. You learn as you go. Progress over perfection. The moment you start it, the moment you are it. You have to give yourself permission to be this new version of you. No one else is going to give you the permission. I had these ideal fantasies when I was working my nine to five job selling women's shoes. I'm going to meet Tony Robbins. I'm going to meet all these really high level people. And they're going to tell me, Aaron, you're good enough. Make videos. And then I'm going to do it. But guess what? That day never came. I even helped Sage Robbins, Tony Robbins' wife. She didn't tell me I was good enough. She didn't tell me, Aaron, I see all this potential in you. I helped Jack Canfield. And I remember helping him with shoes. It was a very synchronous experience. I helped him with uh, something for his wife. 
recognized who he was once I had his Black American Express card. I swipe it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do what you do. I was all so cheesy. I'm going to do what you do one day, Jack. And he was like, cool, come to my, t t come to my training. I train people how to do what I do. $20,000. I didn't have $20,000. I didn't do it. But I, was, uh, I always remembered that because guess what happened? Within two or three years, I was doing what he was doing. I wasn't writing chicken noodle soup books, whatever the hell, but I was making videos, speaking, and doing what I do now. And then eventually, I actually got, I got invited to something he was doing, like a mastermind thing he was doing in Costa Rica. I got invited to it. And I was like, whoa. Like invited to it, not just like to pay $20,000 or some shit, but like invited to it as like an equal. And I was like, wow, come in full circle here. But realize reality changes on the outside when you change on the inside, when you make a new choice about who you are and when you start it. And realize if you believe you're unworthy, you're going to block yourself from starting. That's not true. It's just something that's keeping you in familiar territory. If you believe that in order to be good enough, you have to be perfect, that's just keeping you stuck. Some of the other common ones are sometimes people believe that they're afraid to shine. Why? Because most likely you were a sibling growing up or somebody else overtook. Uh, you, you taking up the spotlight meant somebody else wasn't getting their needs met and you're a peacemaker and you want everyone to be happy or you feel like you weren't good enough or something like that. Here's the thing. Being afraid to shine your own light is once again just something you learned in childhood. You came here to be bold. You came here to express the real you. You can be the real you unapologetically, and if that makes someone else feel small, it is not your responsibility to help them feel better. I know I've had this mentality. Growing up, I think I was like with my brother, I think I was wanting him not to feel small or insignificant, and there were times where I remember, I remember one time after I became successful on YouTube, um, like, I guess whatever we'd call successful, but it basically I got my own, I, I uh, moved in, I was renting a house that was $3,000 a month in Vegas. And that was like a ton of money for me back in the day. And I rent, I, I got all new furniture for this house. My brother came in town and we did a little family thing at my house. And when he came over, I couldn't even tell him that that was my house. I told him I had roommates because I was in, I didn't want him to feel small. I didn't want him to feel like, like, why does Aaron have all of this stuff? I felt guilty being successful. I felt guilty the fact that I like grinded on YouTube for a year to become successful and I lived in a $3,000 a month house with furniture and my family was over. I felt guilty for it. So I lied to him and said that my roommate, I closed the door and said one of my roommates isn't home because I didn't want to shine too bright or make him feel small. Eventually I learned from this though because then I... <laughs> Like two years later, I moved into an even, I lived, in a, I lived three, three doors down in Vegas from Mike Tyson <laughs> in this guard-gated neighborhood in this gigantic 5,000-square-foot Italian-style house. It was an amazing house. And then he was in town again. He came over, and by this time, I said, screw it. There's no, I'm not, there's no reason for me to lie. I like, became aware of all this stuff. And um, I just allowed myself to, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, I, I, you know, this is, this is my life, whatever. But in my mind, I was afraid of what everyone else would think of me. I was afraid of having, you know, afraid of shining. Sometimes even on YouTube, I want to share things from my life, but I hold myself back because I don't want to look like I'm bragging, even though my lifestyle is like something that, uh, that has been created. You know what I mean? So sometimes, like back in the day, it was easier for me to sometimes make videos because the things were so relatable, you know? Now it's like different. It's like some of my challenges now have to do with, you know, my life has become kind of complex. I have three houses. I have, um, like I travel. Like I, th there's things, there's part of my life that are really cool. Some of it gets kind of challenging sometimes because complexity isn't necessarily always the best, you know, the most simple thing. Um, however, I don't share some of this stuff because different aspects of it, avenues of it, because yeah, I just don't want to, um, I guess I, I'm afraid to shine myself. Maybe I'll let that go more, but in general, realize that the, the only reason you're not starting is because of the story. The moment you start it, the moment you are it, the moment you put yourself on a time, a new timeline, you must be that which you prefer to be 
to then see a new reflection in your life. And when you do that, it changes so much about your life. Now, if you haven't checked it out yet and you haven't calibrated your vibration and got a meditation for helping you get to the next level, it's one of the most powerful things you could do. I recently redid this whole entire quiz. All you got to do is go to whatsmyvibration.com or click the link below, calibrate your vibration, get a meditation for getting to the next level. And then I'll also send you emails showing you how to upgrade your level of consciousness, which will change absolutely everything in your life. Now, if you want a video that also shows you how to heal perfectionism, it's one of my most popular videos on this, and it also shows you how to release procrastination. So check this video right here if you haven't already. If you're feeling stuck or like there's something that's holding you back from taking action, there's something holding you back from being the most authentic version of you, then what is happening is there's old paradigms that are in place keeping you stuck, keeping you frustrated and living